Dude, I'm gonna kill you. Oh Ooh. my god. Oh, he boxed the ear. That is a real technique, by the way. Oh. So cool. <laughs> Are you in this? Yes, I am in this. All right. Double in Mr. Anthony Mackey. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. Stick around to the end to see how you can get a free 30-day trial. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Stuntmen React. I am joined by two stuntmen. It's crazy. I have both Aaron Tony and Guy Da Silva. Guy, there are two Black Panthers on the couch. There are. The original Black Panther and like backup Black Panther, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. you know? But he's also Falcon, so he's like a double duty superhero. <laughs> so it's like, okay, like, yeah. Most of you guys have probably seen other episodes, but if you haven't, both Aaron and Guy are incredibly accomplished stuntmen. They have insight into this crazy world of stunts. I can't wait to have you guys kind of break down some really cool scenes for us. Let's jump in. What do we got? Ooh. Ooh. Let's do it. Are you in this? Yes, I am in this. All right. Double in Mr. Anthony Mackey. We actually went out to an actual air base and they had a giant plane that they had Mackey sort of fly in on, on wires. It was great. So oh, that's dope. It was, wow. it was practical, yeah. That. Oh my <laughs> god, that was Dan Carter doubling for, oh, cool. uh, for, for GSP. George Rush St. Pierre! Oh man, he's amazing. He I'm so, so jealous. Cool. <laughs> so jealous. He's, a, he's freaking awesome. He was a rock star for this whole fight. Ooh, ooh. Aaron out here beating everybody's butt. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Oof. So when he got slammed to the ground, is that your push? No, that was was being ramped. So I, I did make mid contact, and then when I punched him, they accelerated him down in, in the edit, which looked really good. So I love that. I love the swag of the sweep into the punch into the ground that you do. Cause yeah. It's like it's like oh yeah, that's at swag right there. <laughs> <laughs> So for that, did yeah. you run and slide on a board or did you guys do wire? Oh, correct, both. So okay. we, they actually set up a small board and we had, had wires that are connected to my front and back and I was accelerated. And they, they also set a hard mark for our guy so that he doesn't slam his head into that, that oh, actual interesting. So he's like on a wire and then yeah. stops him right before the impact so he can sell the impact. Exactly, he's on what's called a dead man. So quick question. Yes, sir. Let's say, let's say you're about to kick a guy as hard as you can. <laughs> yeah. If you jump off a wall with your leg to do a kick like that, does yeah. it actually help you deliver more power into a kick? Yes. Anthony Pettis, am I right? Yep. Not think of a better way. Kick. Kick. Really? You've seen it in the UFC. The technique works. Have either of you guys ever been knocked out from a stunt? Yep. Thank you, Anise. <laughs> <laughs> what did he hit you with, bro? Uh, he had to do the kip kick that Scott Atkins is known for mm -hmm. doing, and he smashed my head into the ground of 8711, and <laughs> I got up and didn't know where I was. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the classic, what day is it? Who are you? <laughs> How did I get here? If anybody says one of those three things, they have a concussion. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this seems crazy. This is nuts, yeah. They did a lot of actual practical uh, sort of wingsuit stuff for this too. Really? Yeah. Were you the one coming up with some of the choreography then? Yes. I didn't want to, want to take a fight coordinator approach on this because Dave McCumber's amazing. And him, Dan Carter, Justin Eaton, those are the guys that, that were kind of, kind of in charge of the fights. But one stipulation I had is that I was responsible for Falcon's actions. Falcon has a, a base of Taekwondo, close quarters combat, and all, all of his sort of aerial prowess. Those are the three things that I try and mesh. I mixed the Taekwondo in there because that's some, something that I do. So I was like, I can kick, let's go ahead and start doing more kicks. And we didn't get to do much more kicking till about Civil War. That's where we mm -hmm. got to start playing around with the like scissor kick and all that other stuff. So that's where I really started to really take on a style for him. That's him. It's Blade. It's the Daywalker. Opening scene of Blade. Are we doing this? Yes. Are we doing this? <laughs> so I, I picked this one because I think it's super iconic. I am so excited. I'm so glad you picked this, bro. I love Hell Blade. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
Oh, that guy got work. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. So cool. <laughs> and then all oh, the spin around to the punch at camera. Oh. Here we go. Bruce Lee moment. Ooh, what the? Boom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the fully auto like pistols is also yeah. such a, like a 90s action movie thing. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. You're like, you'd be out already. But you know what? <laughs> they did, did a really, really good job because yeah, they, he actually he reloaded, reloaded twice, I think. See, reloads are always a chance for more flair. I mean, we made, we made three videos about this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> reloads are where the gunfights get interesting. Yes. <laughs> That's him. That's him, get him. We're gonna jack you up. I love how Wesley Snipes handles his katana. Technically, it's a stiletto so because it is bladed on both, both sides. sides and it's straight. Thank Flex. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cut that clip, cut that clip. <laughs> Wes was playing around with katana stuff, Kali flow, just blending, blending styles. And it's yep. amazing to watch that the fight choreographers play with that stuff. When you say Kali flow, what do you mean by that? Eskrima is the, is the actual correct term, but it's all close quarters fighting. Kali is one of those arts, like Japanese um, sort of judo and jujitsu. Its practicality is so applicable mm -hmm. that that's why it's used so much. Yeah, because you know most film fighting is, you know, this yeah. kind of stuff. Very little yeah. film fighting is in kind of stuff. Yeah, but there's ways to go ahead and make that that stuff look really good. Like everything that 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 Wesley is doing right now is being made long. Technically, that that strike wouldn't be way out there. It would be in here, but. He knows how to play to camera. And it's funny because some, sometimes I think what happens with people who are like purists with like sword or martial arts, they go, you wouldn't really do that. And you go, you don't really understand camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie though. And, and, and if you can understand that, you can have a lot of fun with martial arts. Which is a huge obstacle that a lot of martial artists have to get over when it comes to being a screen fighter. Yes. You have to realize that you don't need to be as fast. You want people to see that you're actually throwing the punch instead of it not being seen. Ah, that guy got work too. That that ratchet was not nice. On tile in the bathhouse? Oof. Ah, yeah, his head went into the tile there. His head definitely went into the it tile. It looks like it's breakaway tile though. It does, yeah. Yes. So I'm hoping that, that our coordinator patted him up because he definitely slammed into that good. Oh yeah. I would love to see just a little bit more of that impact. I know, right? He's he's kind of on the, the, the edge of frame. Yeah. And then you see his face very and clearly. Yeah, they're yeah. like, hey, double. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good double, though. They gave, gave my man a good beard, though. Yes, they did. <laughs> yes! If someone was wanting to become a stuntman or stuntwoman, mm -hmm. what martial arts disciplines would you guys recommend that they practice? I would say learn like a judo, mainly because you're going to automatically learn how to fall. Then you can go to like traditional, I would say, I started off with taekwondo, and I would say boxing. Because your first job as a stunt guy, and from my experience, is throwing a right hook, getting punched in the face or in the stomach, having to react to that, and then hitting the ground afterwards. You're not going to do anything more than that for the <laughs> first not. couple of years. <laughs> you really are not. So just learn how to throw a really good right hook. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's funny. Yeah, we, we, we all want to do the like flashy stuff, but I didn't do any of the flashy stuff till like the later half of my career. If you're coming in, you're like, oh my God, I've got so much potential. Good. Hold on to that, but make sure that, that you're also able to just be a good soldier. And you're going to make lots of money, so it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the part of the video where I usually ask for you guys to leave a comment, but I'm going to turn over to Guy for a second here, because Guy, what's something you would like to see more of? I want to see somebody on fire getting thrown through a window, landing on top of a truck. All right, if you know of any movies or TV shows that have that happen, <laughs> that's a good know. one. That's a good right? one. If you guys have anything else you'd like to see, just, you know, leave a comment. So we've talked about Hard Boiled a little bit on the show. Yeah. It's one of those classics I've been kind of holding off on because it's my favorite gunfight movie of all time. Yes. So you guys are here. We're going to look at one of the best scenes from the film. Let's do it. The squib work is so good. You know that some, some of these guys were really getting popped by these things. It makes acting really easy. I know, right? <laughs> yeah! Oh, it hurts! Yeah. It hurts! Oh my god, yeah. Dude! I'm gonna kill you! Oh my <laughs> gosh. Is that a real dude? No. That's no, a dummy. That's fake. That's he, a dummy. He, that's he's a dummy. all yeah. wire because he's. Yeah. Oh, so he's in the wire to move yeah. the dummy. Yeah. Some puppeteering. Dummies are still used well. We need to bring that back. Right. Stop, stop hurting stunt people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
so many sparks. And you can see they're actually uh, just covering the same action with a bunch of different angles and they're just cutting to different moments. Yes. Yep. What happens in action films, if anyone says, let's just run a Russian box, it should be something like this because you don't have a lot, a lot of time to do a bunch of setups. What you don't want to do, especially with the fight scene, is do a Russian box. Why? Is because your cameras are going to be in everybody's way. It's like, what camera do I play for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are we doing? Oh, it yeah. missed over here for me. Yeah. Of course it missed for you. For, for, for that guy. <laughs> That's so good. Oh. That guy is in it. Oh my like, goodness. Someone put me out now. So you're gonna do a wheelie on a bike and we're gonna set it on fire. <laughs> you're gonna be on fire, cool. How can, how can we one up this? John we one ups it in about 15 seconds. Yes! You have to fight. I remember this. Yeah. Oh Beauty. my god! Beauty. <laughs> I love also like when you see a lot of spark hits like this in movies these days, it's uh Zerk hits. It's yeah. basically yeah. a paintball gun shooting paintballs, but instead of paint on the inside of the paintball, it's zirconium and like some other stuff, basically. And when it hits, it creates a spark. The thing is, it's very surface level. You kind of feel like something's just splashing off the surface. And if you watch here with the car, you would think those might be zerk hits. I mean, there's a lot of sparks. Yeah. But right. if you look closely, you see that there's a hole getting punched, punched in the hood in. and yeah. a little smoke ring happening. And you don't get that with zerk hits. That is 17 minutes of pure action poetry. Chaos. It's yeah. so good. And it's worth mentioning, there's another gunfight scene in this movie that's like half hour long, on top of this scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's two other gunfight scenes yeah. that are like world-class defining gunfight scenes that aren't either of those scenes that we just talked about. This movie's like the best gunfight movie ever made. Still, yeah. still hands down. Yeah, I, I agree. I picked this one because a lot of the times the audience remembers the moments. As an audience member watching Jean-Claude Van Damme movies, you know when he's starting to win the fight. And he has a list of techniques that he throws that shows you that he's about to win this fight. So let's watch this fun little square off with a legend, Bolo Young. Why does he have a belt and a sash on? Don't know, but it's cool. Because it was cool. Oh, he jumped off the ref? Yeah, and he's like, come on, ref, it's okay. It's get okay. up, get up, it's okay. Get up. He's like, oh, I'm all right, shake it off. Okay. <laughs> A nice front tuck. Was that Jean Claude? Jean Claude for real? has clean front tucks. In every film that we've seen him do a front tuck, it's super clean. So Jean Jean Claude could really really do a front tuck. I, I never knew that. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give it to him. Okay. I'm gonna give it to him, him too. Right. I don't know for sure, but. <laughs> Yo, Bolo is giving it to him. Yeah, yeah he's Bolo seen the shot. He's shocking him. Oh, he boxed the ear. That is a real technique, by the way. If you've ever been hit in the ear, it hurts. Kidney shots and box to ears. Not fun. Very disorienting, proper techniques that actually work. And this is when the montages come in. Oh yeah, <laughs> all the training. All the training that you've done up to this point. From your Shidoshi, <laughs> remember. Jump back kick. Oh, wow. He nailed him. Oh, he nailed him on that one. He was like, that's for hitting me all during this whole fight. <laughs> he finally nailed him. Oh, there it is. Boom. The classic Beautiful. Van Damme. He didn't hit him three times, everybody. He hit him one time. Classic. Van Damme in a lot of his movies will always do the shot at least three, three times. You still couldn't see him the whole time, mind you. Remember that. He won this fight blind. Frank Dukes, legend. This is apparently like what really happened. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. This is based on a true story. Yeah, this is, a, yes. this is actually a, a biography. <laughs> Frank Dukes was actually and the, the action consultant on this, I believe. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. The Kumite is, is, is or was a real, real thing. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was actually yeah. full contact karate tournaments where you saw just styles clashing against one another, which is really yeah. cool. Whoosh. Pretend I just jumped down into the couch. I kind of can't right now because I broke my collarbone a few days ago. So today's sponsor, Audible, will really help me out in this situation because I love listening to books and now I have a lot of time to do that. If, if I'm at all sounding strange right now, pain meds exist for broken collarbones.
<laughs> if you've heard me talk about Audible before, it's no surprise that I've got yet another book to talk to you about because, come on, it's like literally one of my favorite things it's called Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. He previously wrote Snow Crash, if you're familiar with that book, but this one is amazing. The book literally starts with looking up at the moon and it's broken into pieces and we're like, that's probably not good. Sure enough, some scientists run the numbers and they figure out that all the debris from the moon is going to hit the earth in about two years, causing the white rain. And that's going to literally kill everything on the planet. So the first third kind of deals with all of humanity coming together to try to send as many people into space as possible. But the great thing about this is that it's like everything that they're dealing with is like real engineering, the real actual technical problems you would run into if you're trying to send thousands of people into space in like less than two years. The second third of the book deals with what happens when Earth starts dying and everyone's still in space. The last third of the book is 5,000 years later. What would that look like? They just launched their newest plan, Audible Plus, and with that, you get full access to their Plus catalog, which is filled with thousands and thousands of originals, audiobooks, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of everything you enjoy. To listen across devices like your phone, your watch, your Amazon Alexa. Alexa, play Never Gonna Give You Up. Ready? Okay, if you're at all interested in any of this, I recommend texting Corridor Crew to 500 500 or simply go to audible.com slash Corridor Crew and you will get a free 30 day trial. Check out Seven Eves, it's a great book. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought of having Guy and Aaron Tony on the, on the couch together with Nico. Double the stunt, triple the men. <laughs> Aaron, Guy, I almost did that backwards. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on this awesome episode. I had a great time. There's some awesome stuff that these guys post their Instagram. So first off, go check out Guy at Guy X De Silva. We'll have a link down in the description below. A bunch of great stuff. Aaron also posts a bunch of really cool behind the scenes on his Instagram at Aaron Tony. We'll have links in the description below. Aaron has a project he's been working on called Project H and just keep your eye out for it. I saw a little snippet here and it was sick. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, to all you guys out there, thank you for watching this show. See you guys in the next one. Peace.